follow. Now moving on, ladies and gentlemen, for our next session on a very interesting subject. Again, I mean, today it has been completely a plethora of mixed topics and subjects, which is the most wonderful part of this session today. And so I'm hoping for tomorrow as well. The topic of the presentation is completely different from what we have heard so far in the morning, hygiene and sustainability. And to present this, I would like to call on stage not one, but two eminent speakers. Please welcome with a big round of applause, Ms. Hemlata Joglikar, Business Manager, Hygienic Fluid Handling, Alpha Laval. And joining with him is Mr. Nilesh Shirke, Manager Channel Sales and BU Head for Food Heat Transfer. A big round of applause to Hemlata and Nilesh for the presentation on hygiene and sustainability. So looking forward to a cracking session from both of you. Hello. Good afternoon. I hope I'm clear and audible. Topic today is hygiene and sustainability. And with me, uh, Nilesh will also take part uh, while presenting the topic. Good evening, all. Good evening. And uh, welcome for this session from Alpha Laval. We believe in safety first. With that, I would like to start this session of hygiene and sustainability. Alpha Laval India believe in its vision of being trusted leader by providing sustainable solutions through innovative technologies and creating superior experience for our customers, people, and planet. We wanted to be seen as best-in-class people and agile organization. Of course, with the help of our customer focus, service excellence, digitalization, and last but not least is sustainability. Alpha Laval is leading global provider of specialized products and engineered solutions. Globally, we have 39 production units, more than 100 service centers, 55 sales companies, and 45 sales representations to support our customers. And very important is with a strong local presence of 85 years in India, we have eight sales and service offices, five manufacturing units, three service centers with one distribution center in India. We help customers to heat, cool, separate, and transport the products for the industries like dairy, food, beverage, pharma, you just name the industry, including ethanol, starch, sugar, personal care, and home care. Like almost all industries, Alpha Laval is there in terms of separation, heat transfer, and hygienic fluid handling. For that matter, to make it more easy, I am bifurcating this huge product range into four business units. One is hygienic fluid handling, for which it includes pumps, walls, installation material, and tank equipment for all these industries what I mentioned. Then comes to separation and centrifuge decanter, heat transfer, and food systems, with which we support our customers to maintain the hygiene levels. So the topic today is not only hygiene, but hygiene and sustainability. We have heard from morning so many people talking about sustainability and saving water and saving chemical and saving energy levels, increasing efficiency, expanding lifetime, reuse and recycle. What is it? It's nothing but the sustainability and its total cost of ownership. When it comes to sustainability, Alpha Laval's clear focus is on four cornerstones. Sustainable food. When I say sustainable food, it's like preparing the food and beverage with the help of less amount of water and energy and reducing the waste and emission. The second cornerstone is energy efficiency. Energy efficiency is optimizing the energy required to produce the goods and also controlling the emissions and waste. And very important is also the heat recovery. 
Circularity is another cornerstone which we believe in terms of regeneration, reuse, recycle all the resources and also optimization of the supply chains with which we can support customer. And the last cornerstone which is very important, water. It's a precious natural resource what we have and then cutting down the water requirements for our plants, protecting the water and preserving the water is really the challenge in front of us when we see the water scarcity all over India. With that, Alpha Laval exists to accelerate success of our customers, people and planet because we are committed for climate and also the circularity. With this, if I see important end users or maybe few end users and if I see their attention towards making important decisions of business with respect to sustainability and environment, they have clear ambitious targets for CO2 emission as well as water savings. If you take Carlsberg, they say that 50% reduction in water usage by 2030. Same with Danone. And probably Danone, we have today morning one good presentation from, so that can be witnessed here. Unilever says that they wanted to implement water programs in almost 100 stressed areas by 2030, wherein Tetra Pak and Nestle says that they wanted to reduce water usage in their own operations by 2030. So Alpha Laval is actually partnering with all these end users and manufacturers to support them to achieve their sustainability goals. So till these last three slides, we have seen the sustainability. What is hygiene? I think hygiene is a behavior because this has got best demonstrated during COVID uh, 2019 and 2020. But when it comes to hygienic design for equipment, then we need to know what is exactly the hygiene is. It's nothing but the application of design techniques which allows timely and effective cleaning of entire manufacturing asset. It minimizes the risk of product contamination, whether this is chemical, physical, or microbiological contamination during the whole working life of our assets. So we support customer for creating financial and operational value by less product waste. We help them to ensure quality and consumer safety with the help of that, they meet their sustainability goals. Also, they save on their operational cost. This was about hygiene. But what about hygienic design? Because uh, in the morning session, one of the panel discussions, we also hear about hygienic design. I would like to take all of you to basics of hygiene. When I say hygienic design, the requirements are very simple, but they are very mandatory for all our equipment design, like no dome, no sump, no crevices, right elastomers, good surface finish, no dead area, no closed volumes, minimum rubber parts, drainable, large radius, and last but not least, no cross-contamination. These are the major requirements when we say the design is hygienic design. Because we do appreciate that the manufacturers, they use their costly, very costly raw materials. They wanted to optimize energy and water usage in the plant to reduce efficient, uh, effluent waste and emissions. And of course, their intention is to increase the yield with efficient processes. When we have seen hygienic design in equipments, it's also very important for us to see what about the process? Because it's not only enough to have equipment which is hygienic design, but also process. There are some principles what I think very important are. We need to separate raw from ready. That also we have heard actually in the morning in some of the panel discussions. Do separate raw from ready to avoid cross-contamination. Safe separation of CIP and process. And then of course the product contact surface which should be effectively clean. CIP minimum velocity 1.5, that we all are aware that if the product is viscous, maybe the velocity needs to be 2 instead of 1.5. Then it must be self-draining design. It should be made compatible with respect to material because when it comes to food industry, many products, I'll give example like they add salt into that. Then stainless steel doesn't work. So the point here is 
ensuring the compatible material for the usage, having smooth surfaces, no shadow area inside the object, no stagnation of CIP as well as process. And then the frameworks which are used in manufacturing plant should not be penetrated. Of course, the last but not least is the proper ventilation. So, hygienic design with respect to equipment as well as hygienic design with respect to process if, if we see further we will check that what are the challenges to manufacturers because we have heard and also seen and experienced that day by day the consumer awareness is increasing and their expectations are also increasing when it comes to food safety market competitiveness, brand protection from recall and withdrawal situations, these are all fears to the manufacturers and also they have to minimize their reprocessing and rejection due to process failures. That means end user and manufacturer has to really follow all the stringent microbiological requirements of Food Safety Standards Authority of India and what they demand, they demand equipment meeting hygienic design from the suppliers it prevents unexpected or unintentional cross-contamination and of course to improve the productivity by using latest technology. But then we don't have to really reinvent the wheel because FSS, AI, these are all specifications are very much similar to international references like EHEDG. When I say EHEDG, this is nothing but European Hygienic Equipment Design Group. And for your information, all alpha level equipments are EHEDG approved. Till the time I spoke about concepts, what is hygiene, what is sustainability, now I want to take you to the actual one of the cornerstone, water. For me, water is really very important. As I mentioned, it's precious resource as well as it is becoming scarce day by day. So, uh, in one of the also session we have seen that cleaning is extremely important for all the manufacturers and it is mandatory and also it becomes integral part of every process. What is cleaning? I think cleaning is a tact. CIP is a tact. It's time, temperature, chemicals and very important is the action. And action is nothing but the impact. So if I see conventional cleaning, on the right hand side you can see the static spray ball and there, the coverage pattern you can see is cascading. That means the water is not touching to the tank in between the two lines. That's the reason the impact of this kind of static spray ball is only 10% and it takes 100% of flow and time. If I see the other technology rotary spray head, the coverage is like a swirling fan inside the tank and that saves 30% of water if I compare with static spray ball. And that, of course, gives a good impact of cleaning 70%, better than static spray ball. Then if I compare that with rotary jet head, the cleaning pattern is index. So it makes inside the tank the eight over the eight, and it covers the tank fully. It saves 50% of water, and it gives 100% of impact. So does it mean that everywhere we should go and use rotary jet head? No. Maybe the answer is no because actually cleaning is very much application oriented and it is based on whether the product is easy to clean or difficult to clean, whether the product is dissolving in water or not, whether it is viscous, it has particles, it is sticky, oily, greasy. So Alpha Laval will support you to select the right cleaning machine for the right application and very important is the tank internal geometry. So we select right machine for you. Here on the left side, I am demonstrating one of the case, which is actual case, wherein the application was very critical and customer was using rotary spray head. He was cleaning the equipment in 27 minutes, maybe tank in 27 minutes. When we replace that with rotary jet head for the trials, the cleaning time has come down from 27 minutes to 20 minutes. Cost has come down from 65 euro to 15 euro. And if I consider cleaning 30 cleanings per month, then the cost from 2000 euro to 464 euro. And for the whole year, if you see surprisingly, 77% cleaning cost has come down. 
it has come down from 23,000 to 5,500. And typically in this case, the payback was just 0 0.1, 0 0.1 year. So this was about one cornerstone water, which is CIP cleaning in place, and it's a tact, as I mentioned. So maybe the next cornerstone, I would like Nilesh to take this ahead as energy efficiency. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, Himlata, for setting up the contest. Uh, you take us through alpha level vision, the importance of hygiene design, and the important the responsibility of all of us to, towards the sustainability. Uh, I am Nilesh Shirke. I am taking care of heat exchanger part in alpha level, and I am responsible for the design and supporting all our customers for the heat exchanger required for the food industries. Uh, today, I am going, going to uh, take a task of you know explaining the energy efficiency importance of energy efficiency in today's scenario to meet the sustainability requirements uh, basically uh, if you see uh, like you know energy we uh, uh, energy efficiency is our dna and of course we always try to develop our products to meet the energy efficiency requirements in fact if i uh, take you through the figures like you know al almost 100 gigawatt energy is saved a saving is done with the help of alpha level heat exchanger technology over every year. So with this, I just wanted to uh, brief you, like if I see the current uh, challenges, there are two main current challenges. Is One is like world need more and more energy to be a sustain to in the current requirements. Every country want to sustain uh, and they want more and more energy. But at the same time, we want to reduce the emission. We want to become a zero emission to be a sustainable for the future. So considering all these two things, our heat exchangers, we have wide range of product portfolios, which plays important role in manufacturing industries. We have different type of heat exchangers, which satisfy almost all your requirements. I will not go through the product presentation because you know these equipments are running in the industry. We are we are working on always working on the developments and we are born to give the quality equipments as per the hygienic and the uh, sustainability requirements. There are different type of heat exchangers available in our product portfolio. Basically, gasketed plate heat exchangers, then welded heat exchangers. We have uh, some other type of heat exchangers. We have some pharma gear heat exchangers, we call it the pharma x pharma line. There is one more type of heat exchanger, if you say at the right side, which is a scrap surface heat exchanger, which, which is mainly used for the viscous applications. So based on the customer requirements, we select the type of heat exchangers which will give the correct quality products outputs and at the same time gives an energy efficient solution. Next slide. Okay. Uh, again, to, sh to quickly show you the energy efficiency importance, I am taking an example of dairy industry. In dairy, pasteurization is one of the important uh, operation. Basically, pasteurization, I feel it's not that much critical operation, but it's important when it comes to the operation level. Basically, if the milk which we are boiling at the home is the same thing what we are doing in the pasteurization. Only in the, in the plant level, when we are pasteurizing the milk, we need, need to take care of few things. One is the efficiency, effective use of energy. Second thing, we want to have a right temperature at the intermediate stages because in the, in the operation level, we want to pasteurized milk, but at the same time, we have some intermediate operations like separating the cream from the milk and even homogenize the milk before it goes for the packing. So if you see uh, quickly, the pasteurization process is simple where we take a four degree milk example, we heat up to intermediate temperature and then finally we heat up to the pasteurization temperature. Once we reach to the pasteurization temperature, then we, our responsibility is to hold for the uh, defined time and then again cool it down to the uh, storage temperature. So in this process, in the middle, if you can see, there is a regeneration section. Maximum the regeneration, that will be save the energy ultimately. So the regeneration, the increase, to increase the regeneration efficiency, while designing the heat exchanger, we take care of the heat transfer area required for that operation. And that, that gives a regeneration efficiency. Basically, giving more area means we, we need to have a more number of plates in the heat exchanger. And that, that, that decides the regeneration efficiency. Uh, if I if I compare if I compare two different regeneration designs like 90% and 93% earlier industry practice was you know the pasteurizers were designed up to 90% regeneration efficiency now 
the trend is 93% efficiency. With this 3%, we can save a lot of energy over a year. And if I, if I see the calculations, I have taken a basis like, you know, the production per day is 16 hours and let's say 300 days in a production. This is the basis for these calculations. So basically we have seen the, uh, in the previous slide that you know, when we want to pasteurize the milk, we need to heat up to certain temperature and again cool it up to certain temperature. Like start from the 4, 4 to 80 and 80 to 4 degrees Celsius. In this, in this operation, we need ho hot water for heating purpose and cooling water for cool down the milk again back to the 4 degrees Celsius. If I see the calculations, if I go with the 90% regeneration efficiency, I heat the milk up to let's say 72 degrees Celsius up to the regeneration. And if I go for 93%, then that same milk gets heated in regeneration up to 74 degrees Celsius. So my target temperature is 4 degree in case of 93%, and it's 6 degree in case of 90%. This difference over a year, you can see that it saves a lot of hot water. Ultimately, it converted into the steam consumption to generate the hot water. And if you see the operating cost for 90% regeneration efficiency, let's say six, 16 lakhs is the hot water. Uh, like um, generation cost for with 90% and in case of the 93% it is about 12 lakhs. So in this way, if we calculate for the cooling, cooling part also, sorry, it's a cooling values and heating case 30 lakhs and 26 lakhs. In totality around seven to, uh, 6 to 7 lakh rupees we are saving with the 93% regeneration efficiency. The, if I take an average cost of the, let's say 20 kL capacity pasteurizer, means around our payback period for a complete equipment is around 2 years and after that, Every year, that particular pasteurizer gives us the additional profit, and it will, it will, it, in fact, it can take care of the maintenance cost of the equipment. In this way, we always, as an alpha level, we, we, this is not something only alpha level heat exchangers can do. This is the heat exchanger technology, it's a thermal calculations. All of the manufacturer can achieve this, but the behind this all calculations, we have very strong our R&D center, our product knowledge, which help us to, you know, give the, desired results with consistent outputs, intermediate temperatures. Uh, and this calculation shows that, you know, energy efficiency uh, help to reduce the operating cost. Now, as I said, why alpha level pasteurizer? Basically, if I see the, the design capabilities we have, we mainly focus on to the uh, main criteria, energy and the hygiene. So to have a hygienic products, to give a good quality products, we take care of the cleaning of equipment in that after cleaning it, 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 it always give uh, or safeguard your products with the 100% cleaning. At the same time, we use uh, proper material for manufacturing our equipment and uh, even the type of plates we are using that, that helps to give the better cleanability, product gentle heating and cooling application. As, as well as the energy saving with the help of saving some utilities uh, at, during the operation. And one more feature is like, you know, in the pasteurization process, there are different product can be handled in a single pasteurizer with the help of alpha level pasteurizer, where you can manufacture normal milk, even you can make a curd out of that, you can make other pa juice pasteurization in the same heat exchanger based on the, you know, whatever inputs we have received, whatever design basis we have considered, and that helps a lot to end user to, you know, save the operating cost. Basically, we value your uh, money, and based on that, we use our, uh, R&D backup, our uh, technical expertise to give the results. I think this is all about the uh, product energy saving through our heat exchangers. Now, next slide, I will just quickly show you uh, the how we select the product basically and in that the concept is like, you know, based on, fine, fine, the, the earlier slide was like, you know, how we select the heat exchangers basically. When we understand your product re uh, properties, the requirement, Based on that, we select the type of heat exchanger. If it is the, it, and there are two bases. One is the viscosity of the product, and second is the if it is if it is containing some particles. With the help of these two uh, parameters, we select the type of heat exchanger in the range of let's say one mm cap uh, size of particles, one to one and half, or two mm cap size, uh, up to 5,000 5, cp viscosity. We we prefer to go with the plate heat exchangers. If above that in mid, mid velocity up to 10,000 CP, we use tubular heat exchangers. We have a corrugated tube, tube type heat exchanger. It's a saline tube type heat exchanger. And above that, if the product is too viscous, like ketchup, honey, in that application, we have scrap surface type uh, heat exchanger. So 
I just wanted to give a brief overall view that you know, the, to select the right heat exchanger and which will give the right results, it requires a lot of uh, back calculations and expertise and you know, past experiences. So based on that, we always uh, select the heat exchanger. Now, next, yeah, yeah you can continue. Maybe with this actually in short time we have covered concepts like hygiene, sustainability and Alpha Laval is there with all the food and uh, dairy and all industry manufacturers to meet your sustainability goals. Very important is the question is why Alpha Laval? Because you have seen the technology, the strong technical strengths of Alpha Laval, that's how I men I'm mentioning here know-how. Know-how of Alpha Laval, quality. When it is alpha level, it is quality is required to be there. There is no other question for quality. It is value for money. Documentation. So you name the thing what end user is expecting. And that is there with alpha level because it's a long presence in India, having a reputed brand name. And of course, digitalization is on our agenda. That is the reason you see the number of tools available in alpha level for individual equipment and which is making actually user also to use it and make it user friendly. Maybe just to add on uh, other uh, capabilities, we have service capability, we have strong service team which take care of the uh, after sales activities, uh, to give the customer support in case of sh uh, shutdown or any background. We have uh, like uh, strong uh, supply chain developer for the service uh, activities to supply the material on time. Service, uh, service engineer ability at site and we have our partners, those who are close to the customer who take care of the emergencies. Next the standards, if you see we follow all the standards as per the requirement. Whenever we design or whenever we invent new products or anything, at that, that stage of we, we thought of the standards and we take care of the all standards like FDA and 3A uh, requirements. And performance, ultimately the performance is the thing like we have proven hygienic designs we have global installations which you know proven and then add on features we have we take care of add on features uh, along with the product and about, uh, basically the functions and principle of the equipment all uh, in all this area we take care of the uh, customer requirement and that's wha what we feel is uh, easy to work with alpha Lava for our customers yeah, i think uh, that was from our side and uh, i think he's telling me that we have taken little extra time. So we both are available and in fact Alpha Level team is available. My colleague Alok is there, great, two great distributors and our managing director Subhash Das is also here. We are here for the whole day as well as tomorrow our team will be here. So maybe uh, question and answers, my organizer is telling me that we don't have time to take the questions <laughs> now. <laughs> And Absolutely. you are welcome to connect with us anytime. Thank you. Absolutely. And big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for Hemlata and uh, to Nilesh for that wonderful presentation. would request both of you to, if you could take the center stage. And I would like to call on stage Dr. Ramesh Kantaria from Dr. Reddy's to kindly do the honors of felicitating our two wonderful uh, eminent speakers here, Hemlata and Nilesh. Thank you so much, doctor, for doing the honors. So ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Hygiene and Sustainability and presented by Himlata Joglikar, Business Manager, Hygienic Fluid Handling from Alpha Laval and Nilesh Shirke, Manager Channel Sales and BU Head, Food Heat Transfer Division from Alpha Laval. A big round of applause once again, ladies and gentlemen, for that wonderful presentation. And Team Alpha Laval is available today as well as tomorrow, so you are more than welcome to interact with them and learn more about their unique offerings for the F&B industry.